Yeah, thank you. That's that's quite a setup. Thank you. Um, exactly. So yes, this is another session on community. Um, yesterday we talked a little bit about um, open secrets for getting your contribution adopted by the OpenMRS community, like this one around um, the importance of not just knowing our technology. Um, it's not it's not just enough to know JavaScript or Java or how to use GitHub. Um, it's actually very important to know um, how our community works and how we're organized so that you can find your way and start building the trust and sharing your knowledge and accessing resources or sharing resources so that whatever contribution you want to make as a, as a community member to the community ends up being adopted by others in the community becomes a part of our shared global good and eventually gets adopted by um, other implementations. Um, and so we also spent a little bit of time talking about the open source way, um, which is more of the non-technical side of open source and how um, a lot of the values and principles of the open source way are reflected in OpenMRS's own values and mission and so this can all seem very, very abstract. It, it sounds wonderful. And I think the real question that um, we want to dig in a little bit more today is how do you actually apply these very abstract concepts? So today we're going to look at um, our conventions and tools so that hopefully by the end of today, you can explain um, how to apply these conventions and tools in a way that really eases adoption um, of your contributions to the community. And so that also means we're going to, you by the end of today, you should be able to find resources and information about OpenMRS, what's available, what's being worked on, um, so that you can find the right place in our community. Um, remember yesterday we talked about how it's kind of like moving into a new neighborhood. Um, we want to help you find the grocery store, to find the post office, to find the neighbor who makes really great nyama choma. Um, we want you to be able to find your space in the community. And, and that means using how do you, you know, what is talk? How do you get, to, how do you find talk? What, what's on there? Um, and other community um, forms like that. And, and that's what we mean by being able to access and start using our shared community tools and conventions. Um, so hopefully we'll, we'll be able to cover all of this in the next 20 minutes. Um, it's, it's not going to be a, a detailed how, to use e how do you use each and every tool, but we want to start you, we want to make sure that you have uh, you know where to go and you have the ability to start thinking through how you want to use our conventions and tools to really amplify your your participation and contribution to our community. Um, and I want to start off by actually just sharing a couple of common experiences that we see happen in the community from a variety of individuals or organizations who who really do want to contribute to the community um, and how that how that has has gone what that experience has been like so we have two two experiences to share and here's the first one say in any given month say in february we'll see an organization or somebody post a, a question on talk and they'll say hey what are the community's priorities right now do you think the community could use a feature or function like x y or z so maybe they say, do you think the community could use a patient portal? What about SMS functionality? Or what about this new training program? Or what about a user guide? And people will say, oh yes, that sounds fantastic. We would love to have a patient portal. We would love to have a user guide. We would love to have that training program or that SMS capability. And so they'll hear, fantastic, the community wants this. Um, and then in May, a few months later, they'll follow up and they'll say, hey, great news. We have a client that wants to build that patient portal, that SMS feature, that training program, that user guide. Fantastic. Okay, we're going to help do this. This is, we're going to contribute to this to the community. And then the next year, the following, say, February, 
we'll have one of our open MRS online community meetings. We'll open it up to implementers and individuals to do lightning talks and showcases. And they will be doing uh, a, a showcase presentation showcasing that exact feature or functionality that they had just gotten a fantastic response to saying that the community wants. Um, and then they'll ex kind of expect the community to absorb that feature or function, uh, you know, like maintain that code. Um, and then a year later, we'll, dis they'll, we'll all discover, or maybe even the following October, we'll discover that there aren't actually that many implementations who are using that feature or who are using that user guide or using that training program. And the organization or the individuals doing that work are kind of confused about why. Why haven't people adopted what we've been doing? They said it was a priority. And we'll scratch our heads too and say, what happened? Um, so that's one common experience. Another common experience is we'll see an organization or individual post on talk, our discussion forum. We have a problem. We think that others in the community, other OpenMRS implementations have this same problem. Um, the problem will end up being discussed in a lot of different meetings, maybe of our technical action committee or on talk. A lot of different groups will talk about it or our front end squad will talk about it. And then no concrete or deep code improvements will be made. Um, so why does this happen? There might be a lot of different reasons why that last example happens. Um, you'll notice from here, and if you think about these problems, that it again doesn't necessarily go back to the technology, although sometimes it might, um, but it might go back to a willingness to, it might go back to unaligned expectations or priorities, um, and maybe the people who are engaged aren't, aren't expecting to take ownership and make those technical design decisions when there's so much feedback that they're getting. Um, or maybe there isn't really a draft PR or sample code that's shared that will actually help um, action being taken. So today's session, we're really going to dive in so that you can look at all the different resources and the tools we have to discover what's happened, what is already, what people have learned, um, what's worked, what hasn't worked, so that you can start taking intentional action that will improve the likelihood that your contribution will be adopted by others in the community and by other um, OpenMRS implementations. So let's start with the first one. Um, and this really helps go along, you know, move into fostering that sense of trust and shared ownership, right? And this is our OpenMRS code of conduct. It's a, it's a fairly foundational con, um, convention. Um, and it's really what makes our community a great place, a safe place um, for everybody to work together. Um, and, and so, as you can see, this is what, what, where a lot of those open source values are, and even the principles of digital development are reflected. So we encourage everybody to review these, the, the, our code of conduct, and we expect community members, everybody engaging with the community to follow our code of conduct. And this will go a long way towards um, establishing trust, building your reputation with the community, um, and demonstrating your willingness to, to take on um, more, more responsibility. Another key set of um, conventions are actually around decision making and communication. Um, so it's, it's a question that we've gotten a lot. Who makes decisions in OpenMRS? Because we know that taking action and creating something requires decision making. Somebody's got to make the call. Um, so what we have done is we haven't you know, said, this is the exact process you have to follow to make a decision. Instead, what we've been doing is creating different types of decision-making plays, such as encouraging open exchange and partic participation, making decisions transparently so everybody understands why a certain decision has been made, um, sharing early, often, and widely 
to expand adoption, um, using community-centric channels, and rewarding commitment with decision-making uh, authority. So let's let's dive into a little bit of, of them, uh, just a few of these, because we actually have some concrete examples of how to actually make these plays happen. So kind of starting with the first one, encouraging open exchange and, and participation. This really goes a long way to making sure that whatever you are working on, that you want the, uh, the community to adopt or other implementations adopt, that you've got the right information and the right feedback from a lot of different perspectives and people know what's happening, right? So ways to actually make this play, ways to encourage open exchange and participation from, from a large group of people, for whoever might have experience with, your, with the feature you want to build or the problem you're trying to solve, is to post it openly on talk, um, just like we saw in one of those examples, right? Um, and then invite diverse perspectives. This is where it's really helpful to know who in the community has experience with what you're trying to work on um, so that you can actually draw their attention to your post um, and figure out, you know, start figuring out who might have something to say, um, who might actually be a critic of your, of your proposal um, so that you can make sure that you include that, that really critical um, perspective into, into the discussion. Um, so really kind of reach out and be specific about the type of feedback that you want and how you want to get that feedback. Um, also identifying champions is, can be really helpful. Um, it gets, it makes sure that people know that it's, people are looking at this and is wanted and they, and they support your, your um, proposal. And if you have a difference in perspective, this is really important, especially when it comes to decision making. That's okay, um, but if when it, once it starts coming to making a decision, explain why there is this difference of, of perspective, um, and think about how you might offer an alternative solution or approach. Or if you decide to go in a, a direction that's different than an, somebody else's perspective or recommendation, explain why you're going in that different. This, this um, direction. Most of the time, people simply want to know that you have heard what, what they are saying, that you're listening and considering their perspective, their experience, um, and that you've you've really thought, thought about it seriously. So the other play that I wanna talk about briefly are, is sharing early, often, and widely to expand adoption. So I think this kind of goes back to one of those experiences that we saw where there was definitely interest in, in, a, in a feature, a proposed feature, and then there was nothing um, until, the, until it was already done. Um, and that really doesn't, the, when you share something early and you share, share what's happening iteratively, often if you give updates, um, that actually gives people an opportunity to one, just know what's happening, that the work is being done and how it's going. And it also invites broader participation. Um, it gives people a chance to join in when they have an opinion or they have an experience or they are getting perhaps feedback from users in their situation that might help you make a more robust um, solution. It can really end up meeting, leading to smarter decisions and helping you create something that everybody actually can adopt because it will solve their problems as well. So again, practically thinking, how can you do this? Again, post a question, post the problem you're trying to solve, post the approach you want to take early on, um, and then periodically provide updates. This can be via talk, via our blog, via Slack, um, and, and those online community meetings that I talked about. Um, and identify when questions or issues arrive. Share those questions. Share those issues. Uh, we're we're a community, and there are a lot. There's a lot of talent and experience in our community. You never know who might have encountered something similar and have either a fantastic solution that you want to use, or they might have they might know something that really didn't work, and and that allows you to avoid that problem entirely. 
Um, the other play that I really want to, to go into is using community-centric channels, because of course, inviting that broad participation, um, sharing early and often, that has to happen somewhere. Um, and if you rely on an email, then you have to know everybody's email address that you want to invite, or you might forget somebody, or you might not know who, who to include in that change. So this is all part of being very open, and I want to talk a little bit about the different community channels that we have, um, because this will really help everybody kick off a discussion or, you know, figure out what community channels you want to use so that you get to the right people and you include the right people in, in your work. Right. So let's look at where the action happens in our community. Um, this is kind of like a map, right? So we have Wiki, we have Talk, we have Slack, um, and, we, and then we have Jira and GitHub and many other tech or technical tools. And these are all ways of openly sharing or documenting your work. Okay. So let's look at um, a, a couple of them. Let's start with the OpenMRS Wiki. And the OpenMRS Wiki is really where um, our more static documentation lives. This is, this, is, uh, this is where you'll find our roadmaps. These conventions that I'm talking about are all on the Wiki. Guides are, this is where our established documentation lives. Um, so I'm going to actually move over to our wiki um, so that you can actually get an idea of where this is. And, I, and I'm going to show this and just say that we are actually in the process of updating our wiki. So if you come back in a month or two months, don't be surprised if it looks a little bit different. So you might come to our homepage, um, but one of the key pages for you to look at and to start with is our guide for the new and curious. This is going to, this gives you all of the information on where to sign up and how to sign up for all of our communication channels, like getting an open MRS ID, which will give you access to um, being able to actually contribute to conversations on talk. There's also a way for you to um, figure out how to join our Slack channel, how to get that access. It also has information on our teams and squads. So if some, I remember somebody yesterday was asking, is there a data analytics team? Is there a business intelligence team? Well, the major ones will be shared on this, um, on this in this guide for the new and curious. Um, but there's an even better place to look at what where the dynamic action is happening that I'll, I'll get to in a moment. Um, if you want to look at our community and conventions, we have a whole section dedicated to our community conduct conventions. This is where you'll find our code of conduct and this decision making playbook. I've I'm I've just been talking as well as our communication channels, but there are a lot more conventions that we have, and I invite you to explore these at your leisure. The other important um, thing to to be able to find on our community on our wiki is our community calendar. Um, this is where you can see what's happening on any particular day, um, and and make sure that if there's a, meet, a meeting that you want to go to, if there's a squad or a team call you want to join, you can easily find it there. Other important pages on our wiki for at least getting started um, are under our projects page. And a key one for actually knowing what's going on and seeing like the dynamic day-to-day -day action, or not di quite day-to-day -day action, but week-to-week -week or month-to-month -month action is our product dashboard. Um, this is where you'll find our product vision, the strategy, and then you'll see down here, it's what you can find, what you can see is what has already been done, um, at least in the last few years, what is, what are people working on right now? Um, and then what is happening next? And that's, those are those emerging community priorities. And you can also see what groups are working on these, um, because like I, like we said yesterday, Different organizations, different individuals build OpenMRS collaboratively. It's not just it's not always one group. It's not always a the OpenMRS um, core team, and so this is where you can actually see who is collaborating on what, so that if you 
if you want to contribute something, you know, this is starting to answer that question of who should you, who should you contact? Who, who should you reach out to? Um, in addition to that, like I said, we also have a lot of feature squads that are emerging and we have a squad dashboard so that you can actually see what phase is each squad currently at. And it says here, again, what organizations are involved, what organizations are interested, and who is the lead. So this, again, helps you identify the right person to contact if you want to know more and get involved in a particular squad's effort. So you can see we have a lot of work going on right now um, and even some emerging interest areas. So this will give you an idea of this is a great place to look. Both our product roadmap and our squad dashboard are great places to look if you want to know more um, about what is happening right now. If you want to dive deeply into different projects, um, each project, each squad tends to have, big project, big, big squads tend to have a project page of their own. So here you see the project page for OpenMRS3 front-end squad. It has a lot of different quick, quick links um, to different project documentation, where to find work, and it helps you get to know the different resources that you should know and how to connect with the squad. Um, because each squad or team has their own space where they meet, their own time when they meet, and their own place on Talk or Slack where they get work done. So that is our wiki. Um, let's talk now about Talk. Uh, let's talk about Talk. Um, talk is where open conversations for the whole community happen. This is our community um, discussion forum. And, and it's a great place to post questions, that, general questions where you don't, when you don't quite know um, what, to, what to look for yet. Um, and it has a fantastic, uh, a fantastic search feature. So um, if you want to search for like, yesterday we mentioned labs and you just type in labs, you'll see all of the different conversations that have been happening on labs. Um, for all time. So you can even go back and find out what were people talking about two, three, four, five years ago um, around labs and what is where's the current conversation. So looking and seeing the date is always really important. You'll all, we also post every week and we pin it a what's happening post. This is a cheat sheet. If you want to really confirm what meeting is happening, where and when, um, this is a great thing to look for. And it's a place where people post information about releases or questions in general. Um, express your interest if you want to be in GSOC org admin. Um, how do you add order status to orders? Adopting a new class. A lot of them do tend to be pretty technical, but not always. This is actually where we have also been having a lot of conversations about our OpenMRS Academy and um, all of the work that we've been we've been doing. You could even sort by by the different topics to find out more. So talk is a really valuable resource to find out what conversations are happening broadly in the community. But let's talk now about Slack. Um, why do we use Slack? What do we use Slack for? This is where those small groups openly discuss issues and get work done on a daily or weekly basis, right? So that's where our front end squad, our um, lab squad, or people working on ANC or the OCL squad um, that you know Andy is a critical member of. Like all of these different groups have their own discussion space. And so a lot of their day-to-day -day conversations are happening on Slack and they might have their own Slack channel. Um, so for instance, we have a global events um, channel and that's where we have a lot of our day-to-day -day conversations about global events. And it's particularly active when we're working on something. Um, it might not be so active in, during other times. Um, so these are the major places where conversations happen. Um, I also want to say that, you know, 
the, this is community infrastructure. These are community technologies. And like I said, it's just as important to know how to use job, you know, the, the software technologies that OpenMRS is built with, like JavaScript and Java or TypeScript, but it's also very important to know our community infrastructure. Um, why is that? Well, when we have our past tech we've seen, if it's, if it's not something that is keeping up with what implementers are using, it's going to create a divide and make it really hard um, for people to keep up with, with um, tech debt, right? So we saw a lot of, with, when we had the ref app 2.x um, that was built on some tech some some older technologies and we saw that a lot of different implementations were moving to using to using angular or react and it was making that divide harder um, our new tech our new tech um, actually makes it easier for different groups different organizations different developers to come and collaborate um, it also attracts talent because developers want to use the latest tech. Um, now we're using micro, you know, micro front ends, we're using React. Um, it's, it's a lot more cutting edge and modern, so we're attracting more talent. Um, if, you know, the guides, the tool, like I said, we have guides for getting started with our tech. So you can look at our O3 implementer guide, our O3 designer guide, and our O3 dev guide. Links to all of these are on our wiki. Um, and we also have a very design, user-driven design process. So we have tools for sharing design, for creating and sharing designs. We use Jira to help, you know, that that then helps us work on developing those those designs. And we also use GitHub. Um, that's where a lot of our that's where our code lives. And we have a lot of repos in our in, in GitHub. Um, so our developer documentation does include a whole page on key repositories that you should be aware of. So that's another reason to please look at our um, OpenMRS dev guide and that documentation on our on our wiki. That project page is really in, will be really instrumental in having having you get started, especially if you're interested in working on our OpenMRS three front end. The other thing to be aware of, um, like I said, is that we have we have these different squads and we and they each have their own kind of discussion space we really let squads run with the problem that they're going to solve um, but we also find that more and more squads want guidance on processes that they might use so we actually have what's what's been emerging over the last few months are shared dev cycle stages with suggested actions for each squad to make, right? Um, so there's, as you can see here, there might be an individual discussion, a discovery stage. Maybe there's like shared, shared interest happening, shared requirements and design happening, prioritization and planning. So this is, this is just kind of, we're documenting the process, the cycle that different squads are, we notice are tending to go through and we're documenting it so that everybody can easily and rapidly get on the same page about processes to show. So I know that this was a very rapid um, introduction to a lot of our tools, but hopefully this gives you a way of understanding um, how to contribute. It's, a, it's some context, you have an a, a idea of where to start and where to practically um, get involved. I encourage you to use all of these different forums um, and start being a good community, uh, a good community member. And hopefully this will help you chart your um, engagement plan. And if you want to present your plan tomorrow or even elements of it and get feedback, um, please don't forget to sign up for a presentation slot tomorrow. Joshua, back to you.